Aia. How y'all doing out here today? You already know where I am. I'm in the garden. Y'all come on in. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. What y'all doing today on this beautiful Sunday? I am just blessed to be alive. Hey y'all. Hi. You already know where I am. In the garden, yes. I gotta tell y'all something. Hold on. I am planting um, onions. Yes, now is the time to plant your onions. Um, we all mostly likely use them to cook, so there's no reason why you can't plant you some onions too. Onions are like garlic. Um, it takes patience. Onion is like ginger and turmeric. It takes patience. So, um, hey y'all, we planted some onions today. Now, when you're planting onions in your garden, just make sure, like I said, it takes about 100 days to harvest onions. So put them in a place in your garden where you won't touch it. Uh, you'll nurture them when you need to nurture them, but they require very little maintenance, okay? So when you're growing onions, just know it takes patience. Put them in a space in your garden where you know you don't touch it, but if you need to get over there to them, you can. And mark them, because you might forget, because 100 days is a lot of days. So just keep that in mind when you're growing um, onions. But today we are planting um, white onions. And I know y'all got some in y'all pantry that look like this, but these are bulbs. I'd rather grow onions from bulbs than seeds, personally, because um, at least I know what I'm getting, and I got these from a local nursery. So when you're growing your onions, these are already in bulb form, and I'm growing the white ones, the yellow ones, and the red onions. It's three varieties that I'm growing, and I'm going to show y'all how to do it. So y'all just come on in here and tag somebody who y'all think want to watch this live on how to plant onions. You don't have to rethink it, honey. You don't have to overthink it. It is so super easy to do. Um, so get on in here, okay? I had to get a chair because I got a lot of onions to plant. I have two of these uh, to plant. And like I said, I know y'all got some in y'all pantry that, that have the, look at this little sprout. I know y'all got some in y'all pantry that look like this. But um, if not, don't worry. You can go to the local nursery and get you some. Now, yesterday I told y'all about it's so essential to have this in your in your apron or in your pocket when you're in the garden because sometimes you forget, um, you know, about spacing. And if you're not real good with measurements, this will be your little best friend. Now, when you're planting onions in the garden, they require very little space, okay? And so we're only going to put them into the ground about two inches. So now you can use your this or you can use your finger. You see that? Mm-hmm, this is my pinky. This is all you need. That's, just, that's how shallow it goes into the ground. So we're going to put them in. We're going to use a toggle. I know y'all know what this is, but if you don't have a toggle, baby, get you a stick because we're only going to go into the ground about like this. And they only need to be about four inches apart. What's four inches? Let me show you. It's about four inches. That's like that. Okay. So two inches into the ground, four inches apart. And if you're going to use a raised bed like I'm doing, just be very careful not to plant it too close to the edge. So give yourself some space. You can create a design. You could do a diamond. You could do them in a line. But just be conscious about the space that you're growing the onion in. And again, don't overthink it, okay? So let's get started. Let me see. Can I let, turn the camera a little bit? And don't mind my chickens in the background, honey. They're trying to, they want to be on live too. So now that I've prepped my bed... make it all nice and clean because I love everything to be in order. I'm going to take my toggle and I'm going only going to put it into the ground two inches deep. Now you can place your onions on where you want them to before you start. That's fine too. But for the sake of demonstration and because I love y'all, I'm just going to do it for you. Okay, hold on. Now, I did a reel about how to plant garlic, and it's the same same process. You don't have to overthink it. But let me pull out my little measurement so you can see again about how far. I'll take my gloves off. I said about four inches. Can you see that? I hope y'all can see it.
That's it. You see how easy that is, honey? And I just, how many is that? Two, three, six, nine, twelve, fourteen. It's sixteen holes. And I told you I got a lot of onions, so I'm gonna be placing them throughout my gardens, um, in different locations. And once you put them inside of the hole, like I said, don't you overthink it. It don't require a lot of attention. Once you put them inside the hole, I'm gonna use some good old mulch. That's some leaves and some grass shavings, and I'm gonna use it as a topper. I'm gonna water them, and that's it. That's how easy it is to plant onions. Well, that simple. How far apart? Four inches apart. How depth? How 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 deep you gotta do them? Two inches deep. Once you put them in your soil, you put your little covering on them, and you water them. And in a hundred days, you are gonna have a whole lot of onions. That makes sense. Okay, let me show you. And you can do a little design. I mean, putting changing up the color dynamic it really don't matter onions is onions i'm not gonna see here and color code nothing i don't have time for it but let me just show you what the red onions look like as you see and when you're putting them into the ground remember this put the root system down first okay you see your root system put your root system down first into the ground not the other way around put your root system down in the ground first but down okay Put the butt down first into the grass. I mean, into the ground. Now, some of these look like they take a, took a beating. Now, you got some people that soak their onions. Listen, child, I got these from the nursery. They're good to go. I know what I bought, you know, so I don't have to. I don't have time to be. Uh uh. Honey. We, you can, though, to each his own. But I've reaped the harvest doing it just like I'm doing it right now. I prefer not to grow from soil to be, I mean, from seed to be honest. First of all, I don't have the time and I want to know what I'm going to get. So I'm just going to go ahead and plant the bulb. Now, onions could be the gift to keep on giving because you can get a, uh, some onions out for this for two years. Just so you know. Look at me putting the, the top up first. I'm up here. I need to take my own advice on it. Now, don't put, um, you can use some from the home, from the house. If you don't want to go, you know, buy bulbs. If you have some in the, in the house, you can. Some people, you could take the skin off of those too, if you want to. But again, I'm just going to shoot my shot with these little bulbs here. My husband is going to put up one of my um, cattle fencing today in the other garden. And so I'm going to show y'all what it looks like to install a cattle fencing as well. I told you they're at Tractor Supply. You can get them two sizes. Is that all of them? Yes, I need to put some more holes in there. So let me slide this thing down and make some more holes. But yeah, for cattle fencing, I get mine from Tractor Supply. It comes in like two different sizes. So when you're doing that, you're gonna need a, a little tool that my husband used to take the stakes and put them into the ground or into the raised beds and it requires, you know, a little strength. So we, ha we use this little device to put the, the stakes into the ground and I'm gonna show you what it looks like to put up cattle fencing for those who are always asking me, okay? And I'm gonna move this camera up. Don't mind me and my junk. Any questions, y'all? We, we planted onions. Let me run it back. Let me run it back. If you're growing onions, again, it's just a little quick recap for those who just came into this live. When you're growing onions, I am growing onions from these bulbs. You get them from a nursery. I'm sure commercial places like Lowe's and Home Depot sell them. But um, when you get them from local nurseries and places like that, you can get a lot for a whole, you know, for a little bit. So I have some, I have three different types, white onions, yellow onions, and red onions. When you put them into the ground, you're only gonna put them in the ground about two inches deep and four inches apart. Once you create that, I'm using a toggle or you can use a stick, I'm just being fancy today, but you could take this and measure how deep it, how deep it is into the soil. And then you get you some mulch 
and you cover it. And my mulch is going to consist of some old leaves from the yard, some pine straw, some grass shavings, and it's all, you know, it's been compost up, and I'm going to use it as a top covering, and that is it. But when you are planting your onions, make sure you put the butt down first. What's the butt? The butt is the root. And you can see the little sprigglings here. That's the root. Now, it takes about 100 days to grow onions. Again, don't overthink it. Once you put them into the ground, make sure you put them, put them in a place in your garden that requires very little, you know, that you're not going to forget about it, number one. But you don't want to um, make sure you don't put nothing on top of it. Because sometimes life be lifing and you'll forget what you planted where. So use your labels or your markers when you're planting your onions. Okay? Somebody says, uh, she was saying it takes about 100 days for it to produce. That's right. There's, who, y'all, who's my admin in this live? Thank you for recanting what I'm saying. Because I know y'all, some of y'all didn't catch it. But this is, this is, uh, this is the piece for me. Y'all hear my music playing. You want to give your onions the right amount of space to, to really, you know, give a good shot at growing at a good bulb, you know? Sometimes we just be overcrowding our vegetables. And just like us, you know, we need our space to grow. So does our vegetables. We need to give them a space or environment to fully grow. That's why I'm very, very big on trellising. I love trellising. I love giving the vegetables an opportunity to just grow big and grow long and can flow. I just love it. And um, I love trellising on everything. Y'all see that? I'm putting the holes in there. Okay. We cook with onions almost every day. And uh, that's why I think everybody should be growing onions, to be honest. Now, some of these onions took a beating, child. Oh, Lord. I guess you wonder where I I know y'all got some onions that look like this in your pantry. I know you do. Put that thing in the ground. As long as it's not rotting or, you know, uh, got ooze, it's oozing, don't don't plant that because that's not going to do anything. But I know y'all got some onions that look like this in your pantry. Mm-hmm. Put them in the ground. Some people cut it off and still eat them, but that's, up, that's your business. But you can't put it in the ground, baby. Let me show y'all what these onions look like. Hold on. Let's see. You see them? It's a lot of onions. Now is the time. It's March. You can be planting them in the ground. You can plant your onions right now. I've already planted the garlic. So if you've missed the garlic season, check your zones and make sure you can grow your onions, um, your garlic. But I've already planted garlic. It's already resting and it's going to be ready for harvest um, in a little while. Garlic takes about um, nine months. Garlic takes about nine months. Onions take about 100 days. Patience is a virtue, baby. Patience is a virtue. I know I have over 100 bulbs of onions to plant. We planted about 95 to 100 um, pieces of garlic. I planted ginger yesterday. Now's a good time to plant your ginger. Turmeric, it's a good time to plant those right now in March. Those are the ones that, can, you know, they'll just nest during the season and then come fall and winter abundance what's going on Eric huh it's not that's my husband fussing y'all he fussing over there with them chicken all right let's put some more holes into the ground Let's see what kind of questions y'all got. Oh, look, look at who was Vanessa. You are my admin. I love you, girl. Thank you for putting the notes into the live. Because you know, Instagram, when I go back and try to look at the comments, I can't see what y'all saying. So, um, but I do save the lives, I, I save them in my real section. So you can always go back and refer back if you forgot something that I said. But thank you, Vanessa, for being the admin. 
Now, I don't want to plant all these onions, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give them to people. For those that I don't plant, I give them away, baby. Everybody could be eating onions. Don't be selfish. Share. Mm-hmm. Let's move this camera on down. Let's see what we got. Don't look at all that junk back there, okay? Mind your business. Mind your business. Thank y'all for being on this live with me. Kwanya, I should have came and helped you. Kwanya, that would have been a blessing. I've reached out to two people to say, come help me plant onions. And they went ghost on me. See, you see how people do you? They be acting like they want it. But when them vegetables be ready, can I get some? Mm-hmm. I'm going to enjoy the fruits of my labor here. Remember, don't plant them too close to the edge, okay? That's another thing to remember. I'm going to show y'all what the garlic looks like now that it's sprouted. In a minute, let me finish these last bit. My husband be building me beds all over. I got beds everywhere, child. Bed, garden beds for everything. I do bags too, but I love garden beds. I just, I just love garden beds. Once it's up, it's up. Let's see. Definitely check your zone to make sure that it's conducive to grow. What, what I'm just because I grow it in my zone, don't mean you can grow it in your zone. Okay. Just because I'm growing it in my zone, don't mean you can grow it in your zone. Go to usda.gov, put in your city, your state, and sometimes I think it asks for your zip code, it'll let you know what your zone is. The zone has changed. So if you were seven, I was seven A before, now I'm eight A. It happened, life be life, and I don't know what the, the climate control, I don't know, child. But all I know is I'm not, a, I'm not seven anymore. I'm eight. So because I'm eight, I have to grow what's conducive for my zone, and you should do the same. Now, if we lived in Florida, let me tell you something. My husband's from Florida. But if we lived in Florida, baby, I have, I'd be growing some everything because it's always warm there. And I love fruit trees and tropical plants. When you're trying to grow them here in Georgia, baby, this weather's so bipolar here. Mm -mm. You'd be like, get somebody else to do it. Let's see. How about, let's look at some of this. Let's see, what tool am I using? I am using, look at that, uh, a dibbler. See this? You can get this at, I think I got this at um, Target. I don't know what this brand called. Smith and Hawkins. The toddler. But you can use a stick. I don't need you to have no excuses why you won't start. Just because you ain't got this dibbler, they don't, don't worry about it. Get your stick. Because all you got to measure is two inches into the ground. And to be honest, two inches is actually the, the, the height of my, uh, I mean, the length of my pinky. So don't have no excuse why you ain't started. Talk about I ain't got no toddler. Don't worry about it. You don't need it. I just happen to have one out here in the garden. That's my song. Let's see. I'm going to answer some questions in a minute, y'all. Let me finish planting a little bit, a few more of these onions. This daylight saving time got me messed up. I woke up, I was like, what happened? Why, why is it so late? This daylight saving time got me jammed up today. You just making all this noise. What happened? It's, it's loud. That's my husband, y'all. He trying to uh, get his chicken some water. Go ahead. Remember when you're planting onions, don't forget, that's the butt. Put the butt down into the soil, okay? Not upside down. This is the butt, that's the roots. You put that into the ground, okay? I'm almost done. And I'm gonna look at some of y'all questions in a minute, hold on. That's it. So my husband's gonna get grab me some mulch, and I'm gonna put the mulch over it. Now you can put, you know, again, when you when you're growing onions, make sure 
you have some good soil, okay? Don't put your onions in no junk. Some people make their own soil. I do too. You can buy it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Get you some good organic soil. Um, just like I said, just make sure that it's the good stuff. If you're growing your own food, you want to make sure it's the organic. If not, you might as well get the stuff from out the store. And we ain't got time for that. So let me look into this, uh, y'all comments real quick because I'm finished. I don't even know how many I planted, but it seemed like not enough. This is where at in Georgia can you stay so I can come ask you a few questions about my garden? Well, you could just book a little console, get on my calendar. Now, I can't, I'm not always available because I'm working out here in these gardens and helping others build their own garden, but you can book a consult with me. I got a, uh, if you go to my website, you can book a 15 minute, I think it's, it's 15 minute uh, call and it's free. I just make sure that I'm available and I answer as many questions as I can. So you could just do that on my, just go book it and get on my calendar. It says I want to visit y'all farm when it's ready. Listen, we're getting things in red, we're getting things in order. We are ready for the spring because we'll start hosting more uh, garden workshops. I am trying to collaborate with other farms and uh, gardeners here in Atlanta so I can host maybe some workshops there. They can come here. I am looking for a local beekeeper because I would love a beekeeper, beekeeper to collaborate with me and show others who's interested in growing their own honey. Um, I can't say that I know how to do that, but I have friends who do that. And so I would love to collaborate with a, a beekeeper to show others how they could do that. But right now I'm really focusing on people getting started. Uh, I think so many people get in their heads about why they can't start and get, you know, intimidated about, you know, what to do, the information. So I want to, I want to just bring it to the low hanging shelf. I want people to just get out of their heads about it and let's get the basic things that you need to get started today. That's what I'm really geared up on doing. For those who've been doing it for years, you know, my hat's off to all those who've been doing this for 10 plus years. Um, I'm only three years in the game, but God put the super on my natural because I could, you wouldn't tell, you couldn't tell me I ain't been doing this all my life. I just know I needed to do something and I wanted to share with others how to do it. So, um, yeah, but I'm always learning and I'll admit if I make a mistake, it's a learning lesson, trial and error. I planted a lot of things that did not do well. That's trial and error. If I never tried, I would have never known that it not to do it. But me and corn have a, you know, we got a love hate relationship. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna master corn. I mean, I had some kernels, but they were little. They were those little cobs about this small. I want that abundance corn on the cob. So I'm gonna I'm gonna master that this year. I've mastered almost everything. I've grown rutabaga, cabbages, collard greens, kale, mustard greens, carrots, all types of beans, all types of peas. I've grow a bunch of herbs. I grow a bunch of edible flowers. Um, yeah trial and error if i never tried it i would never know if i could do it or not but you know i'm always wanting to learn and once i learn it and master it i want to share and uh so that's why i host these workshops the workshops are about two hours long the first hour we get into information the second part of the workshop we are activated we put our hands into the into the ground and um yeah we start planning things says do I know Jamila yes Jamila is with Jamila's been here she's been to my farm she's with um, she's on television she has a show called homegrown Jamila is some a person I look up to I love Jamila she uh, she's on the um, Magnolia TV network she has a show and she came here and gave me some great pointers I love her follow her Jamila she's at patchwork city farms um, let's see Tara says yes she does she has been yes yes I love Jamila she's my shero I tell her that all the time yes I just love it I love us in this section you know I'm saying something agriculture and gardening you know that sector has always been dominated by by men um, and mostly white men let's just be clear and so now that I'm seeing so many black farmers, black women farmers, you know, we're tapping in, we're getting, you know, access to funding. Um, we are starting to take this, this market by storm and I'm here for it. 
I am here for it. And then not just, you know, black people, but like anybody, anybody just getting into this sector, we should all be growing our own food. We should all be growing our own food. I promise you we should. And it could just start with herbs. It could just start with greens. It could just be, it could just start with, you know, the things that are in your home, potatoes. We all eat potatoes, right? Um, and if you don't want to grow your own food, start making your own bread. Start making your own milk. Start making your own butter. Like, I'm just, we just can't say we don't, we, 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 we perish from lack of knowledge and there's too much information and too much knowledge and too many people that's accessible to you for you to go out here and do it. So, um, I just, I preach that so much because I just want us to live a long life. We should be living to a hundred, but people are dying at sixties and seventies. Why? Because of what we put into our body. We should be living to a hundred. I'm declaring, I'm going to live to be a hundred. I am. I'm going to be this cute old, little cute, little old gray-haired lady in the garden working until I'm 100 years old. I, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm speaking into existence. So, yeah, let me um, see what other questions you got for me. I love y'all. We are planting onions today. Y'all see it? I need some mulch, babe. So I can put this and you're done with that. Look, I get my, my husband, honey, do list is long, baby. It's long, it's long, it's long. I love him though. He is the yin to my yang, I tell you that. Y'all should plant some onions, I'll tell you. Thank you for the live and the tips. You are so welcome. How long I've been up here, y'all? Because I know Instagram cut me off. Some people are asking me about the wood. You could do, um, you could do, I, you could, if you get untreated wood, you need to preserve it with some type of now they have so many organic types of stains you can use if you worry about chemicals but when you're doing treated wood just know it has chemicals in it and uh, a good rule of thumb is if you're gonna buy treated wood you'll see the green in that wood you have to wait until that green disappears before you try to put any type of paint or stain on anything like that especially you know because it's outdoors and it's outdoor elements so if you're going to do untreated wood and you're concerned about the chemicals, there's so many, um, I can't think off the top of my head right now, just went blank, but there's a variety, there's a brand out there that makes um, plant-based stain that you put on the outside of your, of your beds and it comes in different colors. Um, but if you want to do an outdoor stain, I say use outdoor stain. Just do the outside of your box. Um, if you're going to do inside, just make sure that it's not going to be in a place where it's touching your vegetables. You know, your vegetables. So think about that. Um, let's see. Vanessa, you're such a good... Look at you. Such a great recapper. Thank you. All right. So we're going to... Um, I'm going to send you a picture when my garden comes in. Yes. Please do. Please do send me pictures, send me DMs. I love it. I love y'all updates. Wood for raised beds. Yeah, I just answered that question. How do you prevent animals or bugs from eating your vegetables? Listen, first of all, we're in their element, okay? So that's a natural proclivity for an for, for animals, bugs to get into your plants. I love to plant different uh flowers or herbs that they hate the smell of there's so many um natural ways that you can combat bugs i've done numerous reels on them you can go into my little reels and i've done numerous reels on specific plants that i plant for that reason and then there's also natural plant-based sprays that you can treat your grass um or the the area the vicinity of your garden that it would help with mosquitoes it would help with certain bugs but i have seen an uptick in the last two years of these gnats these garden gnats they i don't know what where they coming from baby but they are they about almost choke you out in the garden so um i love to i have to keep spraying my garden because sometimes those gnats can be very aggressive um but that's what comes with it especially when you're composting when people are using like when i'm juicing and i like to use my um my uh, pulp from my juicing to put them in the dirt keep in mind that may attract you know flies or uh, gnats or you know 
fruit flies, you know, because it's fruit. So I like my uh, pulp to like, I put them in the compost bin and let it break down as much as possible before I put it directly into my garden. So nothing goes wasted. You can save a lot of your uh, your scraps. We we save our chicken manure, uh, our yard shavings, our mo our grass, our leaves, our straw, and it just breaks down and it makes for great mulch and great uh, compost. Um, worms as well. If you, I, I see when you see a lot of worms, that's that means that soil is healthy. If I don't see no worms, I got questions. Okay, um, but yeah, but again. Um, I haven't had too much of a problem with deer too much. A lot of my gardens are already enclosed and we had to just because we live in the country and it's a lot of open space, so it's inevitable. Um, but just there's natural repellents that you can use when it becomes um, too much. A friend of mine, she had an issue. Thank you, darling. Is this just straw? Okay. Um, I have a friend who has an issue with rabbits. Um, she said rabbits were just devouring her her lettuces and her greens and so what she did was she built a parameter around her garden of nothing but different lettuces and it's like that's theirs and this is hers and so she says the minute that she grew that barrier it's like they left her stuff alone so it's like go to corral for them in their own space so that's a good opportunity. If you have access to or a way to do that, that's another thing is building a parameter. Um, I did have about two snakes that come to my garden. Um, I did use a little ammonia. I'm not going to lie. I put ammonia on the outside of the parameter, not near my food or, any, or my beds or anything. But ammonia helps with snakes. They don't like the smell of it. Um, and it worked for me. I haven't seen a snake since. Uh, and I don't do snakes, but... If I do one, I mean, I'm just going to have to, you know, I'll, I'll deal with it when it comes. But I haven't had too much of an issue. Now, slugs and snails, they love my strawberries. Me and strawberries, we got a love-hate relationship because those slugs try to come in and them snails try to come in. So, a way to combat the snails and the slugs, two things. Um, I keep all my eggshells from my eggs. Clearly, I got chickens. But I, uh, I, um, I chop up all my eggshells real fine put them in a food processor real fine and put them around the base of the plant and slugs and snails clearly are not going to go in a place that's going to cut their little flesh so they typically like to stay away because i put that little barrier around another trick you could do is take a little like a top of a, of a bottle or mason jar and fill it up with a little beer a little cup with a little beer a very low level cup about an inch long an inch deep and put a little beer in it and you put that down as well and the slugs go into that. They'll drown themselves. So that's just a, a thing to do. Um, there was another one. Um, what's the soap I used? I can't even remember the name of it now. I did a whole live on that um, a video about, it's a soap. I can't even think of the top of my head, but I spray a lot of my plants down with that as well. Let me see what kind of questions you have. How much, what now? Tara, I saw your question. I can't find it. Oh my goodness, all these questions. <laughs> am I going to save this live? I am. It's going. To, if you go to my reels on my page, uh, I'll keep that up there. I'm going to probably label it "How to Grow Onions," and y'all go back and you watch this recap because I can keep talking. I could do this all day. I have so many people who want to come to my garden, just sit with me and listen to old school music and drink sweet tea and fresh lemonade or hibiscus tea. And we'll sit out here and talk all day. I could talk all day about gardening. I, I, this is my space. This is my um, space. Um, yes, ca Castle Soap. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you could buy that soap from Amazon. You can go to Thrive Market, uh, get you some Castle, Castle, Castle Soap, and um, spray your plants down there to keep a lot of the bugs at bay. So that's another way. That's a natural way of doing it. It chokes them. They suffocate. I put them on my greens all the time, my collard greens. I put them up there all the time. Um, and it keeps those um, uh, bugs away from nesting those eggs. It suffocates them. I put it on my tomatoes, child. I put it on my uh, tomatoes to keep my blight down. Blight is when your tomato plants start turning yellow, like the leaves. That's the fungus, and it spreads. So if you keep an eye on your garden, then you can make sure that you uh, can kind of sort of prevent or do the best you can with trying to get ahead of it. 
But if you don't tend to your garden, baby, the, hank, the canker worm could take it. You already know what the old proverb is when it come down to that. We got to keep an eye on that garden. So, um, let's see. Somebody says, a whole backyard that needs to be redone. I live in a barrier. So, the, what are some good plants? It's a list. I have a, uh, Anna, I have an entire reel specifically for you. Of all, I, have, I listed about 10 of them. 10 different uh, herbs that you can grow or flowers you can grow in your garden. And I had no idea, but Yahoo News saw that reel and they posted it on their platform. So, uh, if you go to my link tree, the article is there and it has a complete list of all the things you can grow to naturally combat those bugs. Especially mosquitoes, because baby... Mosquitoes touch my husband, don't won't touch my husband, but they touch me. I don't know what it is about this sweet blood, but mosquitoes love me. So I really had to make sure that I took my defense up a notch with combating those mosquitoes. Eric, you let me know when you're ready. So we're gonna put up this cattle fencing on a, a, a section of my garden and I'm gonna let y'all guys see it. So I'm gonna get off this live because it's gonna be too long and I'm gonna come back again and I'm gonna let you see how to install a cattle fencing for your trellising. That's for your tomatoes, your squash, your cucumbers, your loofah, pumpkins, uh, your peas, and marigolds are good for them. I love marigolds, very inexpensive. You can grow them from seed. I showed y'all how to save your marigold seeds so you don't have to keep buying them. But anyway, I gotta go. So now that I've already planted the uh, the um, onions, I'm gonna take some mulch and some straw. I'm gonna spread it out. It's gonna. It's like they're gonna take a little. They're gonna take a little break and they're gonna nest for a hundred days. And they're gonna come right up out of this mulch. I need some more and the, the the onions will sprout right up out of this right here so um, I'm just putting some mulch down over the onions I'm gonna water them